fish is made off. Sparkle and spice and everything nice. lovelies you know it's a brand new year which means the onyx off-road build challenge is back and i believe i may have the best vehicle in the competition now you can probably tell i am not in sand hollow i'm here in moab for easter jeep safari quick reminder if you're here and in town you want to do hell's revenge with myself and our tech tomorrow we're going to be meeting at mcdonald's at 3 p.m we're going to be heading on out there and uh, having a good ride and a good time but this year i have many projects going on you guys all know that we're doing the yj project aka the scottish hammer and if you don't know and haven't kept up with that i'll leave the link in the description below for that playlist definitely go check it out we're having a ton of fun with it here's just a little of what's happened so far it hasn't been much but we're making good progress So this year I have a couple of really big projects in the works, which I'm a little nervous, but more excited about. Nervous because this year I'm really embracing building every, feel so much more confident after filling that giant hole in Mischief Maker's frame and uh, working on Mischief Maker. Cause I did do some extensive work to him and he's still out and about and working and nothing is breaking from the work that I did. So digging into some projects this year, the first being the Tread Lightly giveaway Jeep. Now this is my third year doing a giveaway. It's probably gonna be my final one. I came into this with an expectation or a hope um, of raising half a million dollars with these giveaway projects. And thanks to you guys, we're almost there. So I'm really excited to get back to the shop after EJS and get into this Jeep. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, here is the Jeep that you could possibly win this year. I've already taken it in its beautiful little stock form out in Sand Mountain and wheeled it and had an absolute blast. But straight after I get back from EJS, I am ripping into that Jeep and making it an absolute monster, a rock crawling monster, very similar to Mischief Maker. And I am just like itching at the bit to get at it. Now this project is going to be done pretty quickly. The time frame is April, May. Um, it needs to be done by the beginning of June. I'm going to be taking it over to Pennsylvania to the Bantam Heritage Jeep Festival where you guys are going to be able to see it in person for the first time completely built up. You can enter for as little as a $5 donation to Tread Lightly. There are tiers of entries that you can get or even better, become a member of Tread Lightly. They do so much for us. They're absolutely incredible and I couldn't think of a better cause to donate or become a member of. So definitely check them out. You can get your entries starting April 8th. Not yet. Nothing is live yet. April 8th is the date. I'm going to leave the link in the description below for that playlist. Keep up to date with it. You're going to be seeing a lot on social media and a lot on here about that. So yeah, I'm thrilled about that. Okay, but let's get back to this, shall we? <laughs> Here's the reason. 
reason you are not going to want to miss out on this year's Onyx Off-Road Build Challenge. First of all, it's bigger than ever and better than ever. We have seven people competing in this competition this year and here they are. Paul from Fab Rats. Spare head gasket. Ooh, let's see what Ed liked to read. Rudy from Rudy's Adventure in Design. But everything else has got to go. After spending the entire day cutting all this bull crap out. Matt from Bleep and Jeep. Come along with us to see this mess. <laughs> Colt from Colt Builds It. Cardboard is on fire. Ooh, yeah. Oh man. Nate from Dirt Lifestyle. Trail's super short, that's kind of why it's cool. But it's also the type of place you could bring a buggy. It's an open riding area. That means that you can just pick lines and play on them. And Robbie Layton. All right, so we just got King Fred pulled in because tomorrow we have a recovery to go on. Now, not only are we competing for a cash prize this year, but these vehicles might have the chance of going to SEMA this year. Now, that whole roster of people, there is some stiff competition because they all have really cool vehicles. They're all going to be doing awesome builds and their episodes are going to be super entertaining. But I do think I may have a little bit of an advantage because I'm like you guys. The list of people, my good friends, they're all fabricators. They've all been fabricating for many a year. I've really only taken up fabrication since filling that massive hole in Mischief Maker's frame not that long ago. And I'm feeling pretty confident about it because he's still riding, he's still going on trails and nothing is breaking of any work that I've done. So I could be able to do this, but I've also picked a vehicle that you guys can easily go on Facebook Marketplace, easily find on Craigslist for $800 to $1,000 and do the modifications that I'm going to do and head out and have a ball of a time with your friends on some trails. So yeah, even although I feel like a little bit of an underdog in many ways in this competition this year. I don't care. Now, I know a lot of these teams are going to be thinking about the whole SEMA thing also. I, I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm thinking I'm going to build something. It's going to be cool. It's going to be capable. We're going to have a ball in it. We're going to go rock crawling. We're going to have a great time. And if you like the look of it and the build, great. And if you don't, don't. Now, I know a lot of people are huge XJ fans. That's the first option I was looking at. Although I think it's a very capable vehicle, something that we can all build pretty easily and a lot of fun, in my personal opinion, still a little bit too pricey for a budget build, which took me to my second option, which Walter was really all for. I was thinking of building a Durango bigger vehicle, bigger motor, but again, a little too pricey at the moment for a budget build, and quite rightly so. They have a frame, they have a bigger motor, and other bits and pieces that are super appealing. And then I came across the good old Jeep Liberty, the first gen Jeep Liberty, to be quite honest with you. You know, they're actually very similar to the XJ. They come with a 3.7 motor, or if you can find one, a 2.8 common rail diesel or CRD. The same NP242 transfer case that is found in Jeep Cherokees. And a 4-speed four 4.2 RLE transmission that's found in a 2003 to 2011 Jeep Wrangler TJ. All of that awesomeness in a wee package with a grill that only a Jeep lover could love. So let me introduce you to Project Sheila. Yep, Sheila is her name for now. I'm probably going to rename her when she's built up, but she came with that name. And to be honest with you, she kind of looks like a Sheila. In addition to her absolutely amazing stock parts that I just listed, she came with a few customizations. Her roof is dented and the water pools up whenever it rains. Her driver's side front and rear windows don't work and must be held in place with some snazzy tape. She has some beautiful bedazzled dash and steering wheel logos. She was once driven on the highway without the latches on the hood and 
Well, that's what happened there. Her passenger side fender has been ripped off, but to be honest with you, it's okay because the others are coming off, so that kind of helps me. And finally, probably my most favorite thing about this vehicle is the poor rear view mirror is literally hanging on by its last breath because the amount of black ice Christmas tree air fresheners that is hanging from it. Sidebar, let me tell you something, it's not fun driving in there when it's been warm outside. Take Advil with you, I love them. I may have to take them off, but I'm gonna keep them there as long as possible because I just, I've never seen anything like that in my life before and I think it's absolutely hilarious. I got Sheila for $1,000, which is barely taking anything away from my $20,000 budget. But is she capable? I think this is a massive, massive yes. Now, I just mentioned that I was given $20,000 to do this budget build. So did everyone else. We're all in the same boat. The rules state, if you go over budget, then you're out of the chance to win that cash prize. Who do you think is gonna go over budget out of the six other contestants. Remember, we have Paul, we have Rudy, we have Nate, we have Matt, we have Colt, and we have Robbie Layton. I'm going to tell you my answer in the next episode, but I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Who do you think is going to go over budget? I'll tell you something, I think it's going to be more than one of them. Just with the vehicles that they've chosen, there's no way Jose they're going to be able to build it for under $20,000. There's just, there's no way. Or they might really surprise us. But again, leave your comment below. So I'm going to tell you something. I've actually had Sheila for quite some time now, and I had to travel quite a ways to go and get her. And this is how it went. It is 3.39 a.m been up since a little after three o'clock and we're heading to go grab George's repo ram. That's right, it's repo ram time. We'll see you when there's more daylight and I've had coffee and maybe painted a face on. Finally daylight and uh, the drive so far has been absolutely beautiful. I love it. Currently we're driving on a road with snow on either side, which is just kind of really cool. Get that, get that dad joke? Now I'm about an hour and a half away from Prescott, Arizona, where I'm going to be picking up my vehicle for the Onyx Off-Road Challenge 2024. So just under here, double checking that there is no rust or very little rust because this is a unibody. Jeep Liberty. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> Look at this beauty. Look at Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Heck yeah. Can we get back to the shop and uh, we'll check her out in the morning because I'm not going to get back until like seven o'clock. So I'll see you in the morning. Take a look, Sheila, the beauty.
I just need to get this out. I mean, if this is holding part of it. It's still got Caution. On the Facebook Marketplace listing for Liberty Biberty, AKA Sheila, it did tell me that the steering pump had completely gone. And believe me, it was so hard getting that thing on the trailer. So Maddie and I decided to take a look at it and switch that pump pipe. You kind of need to be able to steer to do anything. Looks like little old Sheila is going to give us a run for our money. I thought she was going to work with us, but... It's not seems, today, huh? Seems today is not the day. Not yet. I think she knows what uh, I have planned for her, so she's just being difficult. So instead of going to Napa and getting um, the pulley tool, we're actually going to take the power steering pump with us there and just do it there. Way easier. Be back in a second. And we're back. We went into town and a lot of the stores don't have anything, which is kind of weird, but that's okay because we went to Dixie Four Wheel Drive and Milt helped us out because he's awesome. So. Thank you, Milt. Back to work. Why did our belt just pop off? The belt flop it off. Why did it do that? I have no idea. That's what I'm trying to figure out. We took her for a drive and everything seemed a-okay. All right, I can already hear some of you kind of like moaning and groaning a little bit. Why didn't you choose something a little more exciting, a little more challenging? Well, there is a couple of reasons why. I don't have a lot of time in between everything else that I have to do and I'm still gonna be traveling across the country, so yeah, the time thing, definitely. I wanted something that's in my comfort zone. So changing a two wheel drive car into a four wheel drive crawler, just not in my bracket at the moment. Not for something like the off-road build challenge. So yeah, but also the third most important thing, I really, really, ooh, Ooh, I just came up with an idea. Did you see that light bulb go off? It doesn't happen often. Okay, I I really want to inspire you guys to go out and get this vehicle, make it into a crawler, and go enjoy the trails. But my light bulb idea just now is if I can get like a handful of you, just a handful of you, that's all I'm asking, to go out, get a Jeep Liberty, build it up to your specs what you want 
I will put together a wheeling weekend for the Liberty Biberty Club. I do call her Liberty Biberty a lot. And we will go wheeling for the weekend in our liberties. How freaking cool would that be? It's happening. So let me know if you're thinking about joining the Liberty Biberty Club and we'll go wheeling. Yes, that's awesome. Well, honestly, I got to get back to uh, EJS right now. Kind of abandoned things a little bit for good reasons this morning, but uh, it's time to get back at it. So again, if you're here in town and you want to do Hell's Revenge tomorrow with myself and Artec, we're going to be meeting at the McDonald's parking lot at 3 p.m. Come wheeling with us. Be awesome. Also, if you want to get a Liberty Biberty and become part of the Liberty Biberty Club, I think I may need to start something on Facebook or something. Then let's get that one going too. And make sure you vote for little old Mischief Maker. Team Mischief Maker right here. I would really appreciate it. But guys, from Moab, thanks for watching. <laughs>